Hi, Krishna Prabhu, please accept our humble obeisances. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are so grateful. Hare Krishna. <laughs> yes, yes. Hare Hare. My dear friends. Wow, this is amazing. Imagine such a beautiful selection of people here. Some dear old friends of mine, I can see. Hari Namananda. This is uh, where are you guys in Australia? You must be. Yeah? Get over Dave. Traveling, touring, doing Harinam. And you guys are like my heroes. And I can see uh, who else you have? Savya Sachi Prabhu Ki Jai. My very dear friend. I've been missing you all so much, actually. This crazy lockdown coronavirus it's uh keeping us all apart of course you could argue well that's in line with our philosophy this vipalamba this separation they say distance makes the heart grow fonder right still we went on harinam yesterday we went um we're doing 125 kilometers of harinam for Prabhupada's 125th Anniversary year, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So yesterday we did about eight kilometers. Um, we're doing several of these walks. Uh, so we walked all the way through Shoreditch, Brick Lane, um, some very nice areas, actually. We've got to take you guys there next time you come. It's like all these little alleyways, all pedestrianized, loads of bars, uh, cafes, very cool people. So um, it's nice actually to find all these different routes. And then we were doing some other walks as well along the coastline, like Padiatra, but without the bulls. And uh, those have also been very, we even made a devotee. We we're uh, going over these hills called the Seven Sisters in Eastbourne. And these beautiful big mountains right along the coast. And on the top of one of the sisters, we met this guy, Matteo. He loved us. Within a week, he was at the temple. Next thing, he was living in the ashram. He was putting on his own dhoti. He was chanting 16 rounds. And now he's full on Hare Krishna. But I have to admit, and this is in fitting with the topic of today, that it wasn't just the, uh, that one little moment of association, although it's so precious, but usually that isn't enough to completely change a person's life. It does change a person's life, but for them to become a devotee in this life, a lot more work has to go into a person. We have to invest so much time, energy, patience, um, put so much into a person to break them out of materialistic uh, activities, addiction to so many you know, fields of enjoyment. So these days, obviously, we know. Social media is a killer, killer of the soul. You should be written there in nectar of instruction. Social media is a killer of the soul. It's specifically designed to bewilder us and to distract us away from anything that's actually important. It's stimulating your endorphins. It's making us very attached to the, the feel of associating with people in a very impersonal way, though it feels very personal, it seems personal, but actually it's very impersonal. What to speak of the youth of today, I remember when I was young, it wasn't quite so bad and going back decades before it was much less bad, but now by the time kids are 12, they've done it all, they've done it all. There's, nothing, there's no innocence left. 
anymore in the world. So how do we wean off somebody off uh, of uh, if they say you meet them when they're 25, you know, they've already had uh, 15 years or 13 years of being addicted to high levels of sense enjoyment. To wean a person off that's not easy. And that's why um, great souls in our movements, great souls, great personalities who I feel very fortunate to, to know now and have a personal relationship with, have established uh, systems through which the, the the average young person can become a devotee in a very natural way and in a very smooth and easy way, simply by putting them in the center and doing what they need to do uh, rather than doing what we want to do. So let me see, let me tell you a little story. Once upon a time, Long, long time ago, in a land far away, there was a boy who was completely, completely lost. I mean, he tried many things. He tried to, to the best of his capacity, enjoy the material world and had some success, of course. But at some point, there comes a point in a man's life when he looks out the window and thinks, wait a second. What's the point of all of this? Isn't this just a waste of time? And you start to hear things about the corruption in government, the corruption of the banking system, the depletion of our social morality. And you start to think, hang on, this world is going to hell. Now, what do I want to do? Do I want to go along with this ride? Or is there an alternative? What can the alternative be? So this young boy, he decided to travel the world and see how other people live. Maybe he could learn some lessons. And uh, sure enough, traveling around, getting into adventures, um, nearly dying, um, and, and so forth, um, kind of propelled, propelled him into uh, association of spiritually minded seekers. Now, of course, we know that every living entity is a spiritual seeker, really. Just we've forgotten, right? We've forgotten. Somehow or another, he woke up like, wake up, South Africa! G-Jago! You want to know, I'm a big supporter of the WUSA a project. I think it's like the best thing that's ever happened uh, in, the part, in the whole world. And uh, I just want you to know, I'm a big supporter of this project. And um, it's very inspiring. And what's interesting is that the WUSA project happened at the same time as a similar project happened here. Because although there may be many uh, differences between the Europeans and the Africans, but there was one similarity in Iskon, <laughs> is that we, the temples had been taken over. <laughs> the temples had been hijacked <laughs> by the non-British, um, by, by the British Indians and the Indian Indians. And it got to a situation where um, it was, didn't feel very comfortable anymore for Western to completely, you know, not a person who's cultured or a person who's traveled or not that kind of person, but a, a fresh guy out of the, you know, off of the estate or a person who's come straight out of, you know, high breeding university uh, comes in. Um, for him, the temple atmosphere was very peculiar. Uh, it was a bit frightening. I mean, for me, myself, I remember it was quite intimidating. Um, one of my good friends, a very good friend of mine, his name is Radha Raman. He said the first time he came to a temple, and this was 30 years ago, he walked in and he took one look at what was going on there. He turned around and he ran away. It was too much for him. It was scary. Now, if it wasn't for a devotee chasing him down the street and stopping him and begging him to come back, he would never have become a devotee. How many people do we lose like that? How many people are not joining because somehow or another it's too intimidating? 
So what's happened is, so this, uh, this boy I was telling you about joined this gone, became a Hare Krishna. And during his time in the ashram there, suffered terribly, um, but also had a lot of good times too. He ran away from the temple at one point and joined the Harinam Ruchi Party. We got to travel the world, particularly, amazingly, uh, with this uh, very exceptional group of individuals. So I'm very glad I can call friends. And, uh, and then I, I, I decided I wanted to come back because in Britain, in England at the time, I'm English, by the way, in case you didn't know. In England at that time, there was really good Indian preaching, amazing Indian preaching, fantastic, very well developed, very sophisticated, very good success rate. They were just pouring in the door, the donations were rolling in. It was so nice, marble temple room floors, very opulent offerings. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Everybody was singing very nicely. And they're taking very good classes, unbelievable classes. So many inspired devotees. But where did all the Westerners go? Where did the English people go? Where are they? And as you look around, between me and the other English devotee who was in the temple, Moli Manahapadu, 30 years, 30 years had passed. And where were the other English devotees? Amazing, amazing. Interestingly enough, the ashram was um, with, you had people from Russia, you, you had people from Philippines, uh, you had people uh, from um, Italy, you had people from many, many countries all over the world, but no one from England, no one, just me. And so you know, I, I started to mention this, I started to speak about this to my authorities, that you're just imagining things, you know, actually it's very balanced. It's very balanced. If you like, you come to the Sunday feast, I think it's kind of 50 50, actually. And I'm looking around thinking, man, what are you guys talking about? Like, but nobody wanted to speak about this. Fortunately, there are people who do speak about this. And one's great such personality is uh, His Holiness Devamrita Maharaj. Devamrita Swami Ki Jai. So a point came, I won't tell you all the details of how this happened, but it was some kind of miracle. Um, at some point, the existing temple president made me a vice president. So what that means is, you know, in Kali Yuga, you have, because in, in such Yuga, is 100% pure, there's no vice. And then, of course, in, in, in Treta Yuga, vice increases you know, 25% and drop by yuga and it's going up and up in Kali Yuga is so much vice. So um, being a product of Kali Yuga, there had to be a president of vice, the vice president. And so therefore I was made in that role um, to, because I understood a few things about vice. So, um, but the, what happened at that moment was, okay, I'm, I'm very good friends with Keshra Bharti Maharaj. He lives in Kent now. Um, some reason we have a very good relationship it's, it's a you know it's interesting rasa it doesn't correspond to you know it's interesting how how relationships work anyhow we have a very good relation we said dial more now you're vice president back dave and rita swami okay marash i wanted to speak to him for so long apparently it wasn't the right time he knows Dave Rita Maharaj very well. They're very good friends going back forever. So now I'll contact Dave Rita Swami. So I got in contact with Dave Rita Swami. Now, the reason I had a strong desire to get in touch with Dave Rita Swami is because he is the, uh, basically, you could say the world of charity in terms of Western outreach. Preaching an ancient philosophy and an ancient culture in the modern contemporary atmosphere somehow or another he's been able to create a working model which turns over 25 new devotees every year 25 new devotees every year and he's been doing this for over 20 years so just imagine after four years you can have 100 new devotees can you imagine how much you can do with 100 initiated devotees 
how much you can change the face of your local city or the whole country so much attention because the Hare Krishnas, although we're not so many, we make a lot of noise. So you can have five guys making a lot of noise, but if you have a hundred guys making a lot of noise, right, that makes, makes an impression. You know? it, it's a big deal. So, and that's been going on and on and building. And now it's a very successful Yatra, what he's got going on there. It's fantastic, very impressive, very sophisticated. So, I wanted to learn. I wanted to understand what can we do in London? Because things are different in, in the UK to New Zealand. There's a different flavor everywhere in the world. Yeah. And so not, maybe not all the things could be applied, but some of the principles, the main principles are there. And so I, was, uh, I wrote him a very bold email. Mirage. I've been made the vice president of ISKCON London. And very soon I might even be the president. Now I want you to know I am interested in Western outreach. And I want you to help me. I know you've got the goods. You've done it before. You know it all. Now I'm ready. I'll do anything you say. Get in touch with me. Because he's a busy man. So I knew I had to write him an email that would grab his attention. And sure enough, he, he replied almost immediately. And so uh, we had our first conversation. Obviously, he wanted to feel me out, figure out who I was. You know, was it just a blagger? What kind of guy is this? Um, but after a few meetings, um, um, very real things started to happen. In fact, I can tell you here that after just the first meeting, after just a few days, we got our first building. Now, in London, it's almost impossible to get a building here. It's so expensive. I mean, it's so expensive. To buy a building is impossible. You need millions, millions of pounds. To rent a building is like for a ground floor space is 140,000 pounds a year. No, that's some serious capital. I can't, we can't afford that. How are we going to start this Western Outreach project? We can't do it in the temple. So where do we do it? I spoke to him, and within three a few days, we got a free building, a free building, five floors of empty space. So it turns out that many of these companies during the lockdowns and stuff, uh, they're paying huge amounts of rates on their buildings. They have to pay business rates every year, hundreds of thousands of pounds. But if a charity occupies that building, the business rates get slashed by 80%. It was very profitable for them to let a charity move in and just use the space until they get the next tenant. So we moved in and we started using the space. And following Dave and Rita Maj's instructions, we set up three nightly programs, three days a week, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So we had Wisdom Wednesday, we had uh, Mantra Friday, and Soulful Sundays. Each with a different flavor. It's a ticketed event. They pay 10 pounds to get in. They have a nice wisdom talk. They have kirtan and then explosive prasadam. Dave Mitra Maharaj emphasized this is so important. The standard of prasadam in Iskon, in many places, maybe not everywhere, but in many places is going down. It is not so good as it used to be. Prabhupada's disciples will say, I remember and the Sunday feast, there was 18 preparations. There was three subjects. There was puris, there was samosa, there was kechoi, there was two types of chutney, there was rice, there was halava, there was shrikan, there was two types of drink. They had it and it was just pouring down and everyone was just in ecstasy and people were joining the movement in droves. They're just coming to the Sunday feast. Everybody was surrendering there on the spot. I want to be a devotee. If I will feed me like this, I will stay here the rest of my life. And they did. And then somehow or another, as time has been passing, slowly, slowly, the Sunday feast is reduced to eight preparations and then to six preparations and down to five preparations. And the preparations aren't even that nice anymore. And so what's going on here? It means less people are interested in joining the movement. It's okay for the, uh, the Indian community. They don't mind. They come get a free meal. They put their in the box and if they go home. But somebody who needs to change their life to let go of a lifestyle that has been their shelter for the last 25 to 30 years. 
the source of all their happiness, to let go of that and adopt a new way of doing things, a new culture. Very difficult. Very, very difficult. So one of Dave Marita Maharaj's secret weapons is to revive the concept of ISKCON being the kitchen religion. To remind us all that food, they say the way to a man's stomach, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, right? So it's a principle. The way to a person's heart is through their stomach. You feed them up to the neck in delicious, nutritious, vegetarian food. They'll love you. They'll love you. Krishna consciousness is all about developing love for one another. What a better way than serving delicious uh, food to, to these people. It really worked. So that's what we did. We, we especially have organized um, the best cooks to cook the best quality prasada we can do right now. We've got plans though. Anyway, I can tell you a bit more about that later. So we're doing that. Um, we're trying to do the best kirtan we can. The point is that for Western outreach, David Reaches Mar David Reaches Marge's principle is that they are the center. They have to understand that this is their place. This isn't your place and you're inviting them as guests. This is their place. They come with their friends and they hang out there. And these are just some cool, intelligent, very wise people that are going to be there. You can meet them. They're not judgmental. They're not expecting too much from you or anything from you at all. They just want you to have a good time. They just want you to be happy, that's all. So to try to generate that atmosphere is uh, central to, to Dave Mita Marge's model as we're doing in New Zealand. So we're going to try to apply some of those principles here. Now, after two or three meetings with David Mita Maharaj, I was reading, because it's Prabhupada's 125th anniversary year. So I was reading the Lila Mita again and reading about how Prabhupada set up his ISKCON movement. And there were some details there I had forgotten, which caught my attention, was that before Prabhupada got the matchless gifts place. Before that, when he first went to the Bowery, he stayed at a place called the Air Loft. The Air Loft. And he had three programs a week. And the program was Kirtan, Talk, Kirtan, Prashadam, Top Quality. And then while they were eating prasadam, at the end, he would be walking amongst them, asking them, how is this? How is that preparation? Do you like this? What's your favorite? You know, to a light, light conversation. So when Dave Mrita Maharaj was explaining to me how they do their programs in New Zealand, well, it's called The Loft. It's three programs a week. It's Kirtan Talk, Kirtan Prashadam, top class. And then the Maharaj mingles with the crowd and just talks very, you know, lightly with them. I said, Maharaj, this, is, this isn't anything new. This isn't anything. This is exactly what Prabhupada did. Exactly the same. And he didn't flinch. He said, Mukunda Maharaj told me exactly the same thing. <laughs> so what's interesting, what struck me about that was that how to... Uh, reach out or how to apply Krishna consciousness in the modern context is actually exactly what Prabhupada did. It's nothing new at all. It's just going back to the old school way of doing things. The old school way is always the best way. <laughs> it's a fact. Prabhupada! Prabhupada! I mean, uh, we're talking about a person is some category of being okay i mean what wasn't he expert at you know he was like the the best cook and if you ever read yamuna Devi's cookbook okay but it's just basically full of glorifications of shila Prabhupada. and her cookbook won the the number one cookbook prize available in the world on its first release even though it was a vegetarian cookbook even though we had no pictures in it and even though it's her first ever cookbook it won the first prize. It's never been done before. 
and it will never happen again. In fact, they changed the rule after her that you can't win that prize unless you've, uh, you've written cookbooks before. In that cookbook, all she does is talk about Prabhupada cooking, his attention to detail, his expertise. He could just taste. He would taste a roti and say, that was cooked on cow dung. It was a combination of this wheat and that wheat. And, and you, you rolled it like this and you, you put it on, a, on this type of wood to cool down. No, he could just taste it. I mean, this is proper. He was the sickest Madanga player. Okay, he's, he's, he's the topmost philosopher, the topmost scholastic ability, his ability to write the most complicated philosophy in the most simplest language. So everything he did was perfect. Okay, so why wouldn't his outreach preaching be the best? Why wouldn't his outreach preaching be the best you could possibly get? So that was the big thing that dawned on me is we just simply have to do what Prabhupada did. It's very simple. Just invite people, be nice to them, you know. We don't be judgmental. You know? Just do a nice kirtan for them, mellow kirtan, and then talk philosophy, but in such a way that it doesn't freak them out. Then the, the next kirtan is a rocking kirtan. Oh, that's the other bit I forgot to mention. It's really important, you know, kids, they like nightclubs. I mean, you all grew up in nightclub culture, right? Bar culture. Yeah, you know, why? No, well, okay, not that one. But you know what I mean? That's how it was. That's how we grew up. So why wouldn't it be when you come to spiritual life, you're going to want to party, right? You're going to want to party hard. You want to sweat it out. You want to bust those moves. And you want to see other people bust those moves. So it's called the Hare Krishna nightclub, the first London's first conscious nightclub. So we have our drum kit, we have our bass guitar, uh, we have our awesome kirtan leaders, and we just smash it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And those kids go crazy. I mean, they go crazy. And there's no intoxication. No, there's no uh, people being judgmental. They're just loving it. And we had two boys breakdancing the other night. And they're just spinning around, standing on their hands, doing all this wacky stuff. They're going nuts. So then they could sweat it all out. They get all that passion out of their system. And then you give them this awesome feast. You know, and it's just served nicely with a smile. You sit them at tables so they don't have to sit on the floor. Oh, my knees. No, you sit them nicely at tables. You serve them well. And you should just hear them talking. It's like roaring. They're just so excited. And then you've got these nice devotees, you know, in Western dress. And they're just walking around, talking to them, being kind, just answering questions. They don't want to leave. It's going on. I know it's getting later, 9, 9.30. It's 10 o'clock. It's still going crazy. I got Mangalarity tomorrow morning. I've got to dress Jagannath in the morning. Oh man, I've got to get away from here, but it's too much nectar. You can't go. It's in the temple because all the guys in the ashram, they know that's going on. And they're just so ecstatic. When they go out on books, they know there's an awesome program to invite these people to. They want to give them the fly. You go to this program. It'll be the best night of your life. You can have a free ticket on your first entrance. And they go and they'll see them there. And so we've been doing it now for four months, four months. We've already got four boys chanting 16 rounds. We've got a, a group of people coming regularly. So even those people who would have come maybe once, maybe come twice and then just never came again. They've got little something to cling on to. There's like, it's, it's, they, they keep a little finger in there, you know. They may disappear for four weeks and then they show up again because they know it's going to be cool. They know it's going to be fun and they know they'll have something nice to eat. And so they come back and they, we would never have seen them again if we hadn't had Studio 108, which is the name we give to our program. We have the loft in New Zealand. We call our Studio 108. So these are early days, it's just beginning, but the early signs are good. Of course, there are many difficulties associated with this kind of thing, a lot of energy, a lot of determination. 
which is driven by a deep understanding of Srila Prabhupada's books, his mission, his desire to save, to help the, the conditioned souls who are suffering so much in this material world, suffering so much. We have to care about these people. We have to care about our brothers and sisters. We are all interrelated. That cannot be changed. It's tattva, it's reality. We are all brothers and sisters. We should care about our family. We have to care about them. If we don't love each other, then how can you love Krishna? It's just sentimentality. Everybody's part and parcel of Krishna. Essentially, they're all Krishna's energy. How can you love Krishna without loving his energy? It means we have no love at all. So we have to care about these people. So I was worried the poor English people were being neglected. I know what it's like to be an English man. It's horrible. Uh, it's, it's a very austere life. Um, you can say, oh, well, you've got your privileges. You know, you've got this, you've got education, you've got health care. Yeah, man. But they're miserable as hell. They're so degraded. That's why we never made any English devotees. If somebody's really, really fallen, you have to put extra effort to help them. If they're so degraded, you have to put the extra effort in. Prabhupada somehow managed to drag out of the gutter the lowest lives, you know, the lowest life forms out of the gutter and turn them into international preachers. Now, I'm not saying that we are Srila Prabhupada. Of course, we're not. But anybody can become empowered. Anyone can become empowered by Srila Prabhupada. We have got the parampara behind us. That's some serious weight. That's more weight than we can, we can comprehend behind us. Krishna's walking behind his devotees and his feet are splashing dust up. Wherever the devotee wants to apply his mercy, Krishna's mercy flows. We simply desire to help these people. Somehow, if we desire it strongly enough, it will happen. So, how to say, how to kind of wrap things up. To apply the Krishna consciousness in the modern environment, modern preaching for ancient philosophy, for, for sure, association of great Vaishnavas who are already doing it is invaluable. Um, we're talking about incredibly intelligent people here, spiritually advanced persons who can explain how to apply the same model in any environment. Uh, will encourage us personally, you know, be behind us, to support us when we're having a bad head. Eh? So association with advanced devotees and a strong desire to preach the message of Lord Gauranga. Yeah. So um, I did, I visited South Africa. I was fortunate enough. I was the guest of Savi Sachi Prabhu. Looked after us very nicely. We did some Harinam. I was in uh, Johannesburg and also got to visit Durban and Cape Town. And as far as I can see, there's just as much potential in South Africa as anywhere else. And the indigenous persons of every land, I'm preaching, I'm trying to preach to the indigenous British. <laughs> we also need to preach to the indigenous South Africans. And if they are to be considered fallen in any way, then we should make extra efforts, extra efforts to help them. We have to care about them. Put our heart and soul into this mission. All of a sudden, we might suddenly find one day we're surrounded by a whole load more friends than we had before. A lot more devotees. And that can only be a very good thing for everyone. So I don't know what to say. I'm talking here like I'm some kind of expert and I'm not. I'm not a master or I'm not a leader or misleader. But just from my little experience, I thought I'd share those things with you. And so thank you.
I mean, I feel very honored and um, I'm so happy to be here with you all, genuinely happy. Um, but I want to hear from you guys because you guys are awesome and I want to hear your voices and your questions and I want to hear your realizations. So please, I beg you, have mercy upon my fallen soul and, and please let's open things up now so other people can speak. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you so much for those words. It's very encouraging and to see that you've got such a successful rate. Four months and four new devotees, that's, that's amazing. So I don't know what will happen in the next months to come. It's really inspiring to see. So I'd like to open up the floor for anyone that has a question. I see we've got a hand of there. So I'd like for you to unreach yourself through and we can ask a question. If anyone else has a question, please feel free to type it out in the chat box below. Or you can put your hand up and we will answer that question for you soon. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh. 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 <laughs> Hare Krishna, thank you so much for the wonderful class. Uh, and uh, we didn't have a chance to glorify you and uh, honor you, okay. you know, and show us our respect. You know, not, um, and we want to, you know, offer you. From, hey, you from know, it's when, when school is happening, when's the, is it coming around soon? Uh, no? Are you already on, there? It's next week. When we're in Brisbane at the moment, we found a hub, like a school is like hub. There's like a place called Fortitude Valley in Brisbane. Yeah. And it's pretty much the same vibe as school is. We started like 8.30, we got to like 11.30 and people just going nuts uh, and voices <laughs> are going nuts. This is like every Saturday now. <laughs> but oh, school yeah. is coming up. They're not canceling it. It's still on. And um, yeah, we're, uh, we, we're, re we're ready to go. And um, hopefully we've got a team together. Um, we may have four or five devotees ready for it. But man... We need you and that tune, my brother. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. No, I, I need you. I need you guys. I need you guys. And I need that ice cream. <laughs> what, this one? You mean this one? Or... No! <laughs> I think uh, I think it is something. something oh, 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 you're killing me, man. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing with my life? <laughs> this is unfair. <laughs> <Damn. laughs> I'm getting on the next flight. I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, it's so cruel. So cruel. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I actually went to Bundaberg. You know, I got the van, right? Mm. So mm. I, I went to Bundaberg and um, I was on my own doing high on there. And I tell you, that town is blessed. Like, oh, so many Hare Krishnas are drinking Bundaberg ginger beer, and they love Bundaberg. Oh, oh Bundaberg's amazing, Bundaberg this, right? I do Hare Nam there, man. Everyone's taking book. Like, I, I'm telling you, like, I, I met only three people on the first time I did Hare Nam there. And it's, like, known as a redneck town, right? And you imagine I'm going there with dark skin, whatever, and chanting Hare Krishna, banging a drum. You know, I'm thinking, hey, some Aussie can't act. Hey, you bloody, you know, I get an area, man. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> I, was thinking, I was waiting for that, you know. But <laughs> so I come through and pretty much like I only met three people. They all give $50 and I give them each a stack of 15 books each. I was like, what is this town all about? Then I meet this lady. She runs like some hippie shop and it's huge. She turns into like a yoga studio in the evening. And then she invites me. To, to do a program there, Kirtan, Tor, Kirtan, Prashada. All I cooked was Kitri and Halva. These guys were over the moon about it, you know? So I'm like, you know, if you guys are cooking like first class awesome stuff in Studio 108, I'm just doing Kitri and Halva, you know? And these people are into it, you know? It's like, uh, it's pretty amazing. But yeah, I tell you, because I think so many Hare Krishnas are drinking Bundaberg ginger beer, so they're all blessed. So that's what's going on, and uh, and no one there drinks ginger beer, so I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, there's this little story of um, reaching out. You're saying about how 
even though we think uh, these people are doing well, like especially like we think people in Europe or the UK are doing well, like in Australia, people in Northern Queensland, we think have the life, they've got the best beaches, best weather, everyone has a boat, two cars and a motorbike, right? But then you just scratch the surface, man, complete suffering. Their relationships are like complete shallow, right? And then you just bring this Maha Mantra. And I tell you, this Maha Mantra, this sound vibration, it just wakes up something in them that they never thought they had or they could connect to. Um, it's, uh, it, it was pretty powerful and but I'm just hearing your stuff. It's like next level thing, you know, because it's it's uh, it's got so much of a backing behind it, and with you spearheading spearheading it, it's um, very inspirational. Mm -hmm. And I uh, love it's it's showing it, and even with Savi Sachi doing this Wusa thing as well, having that center, um, I can see there's like a, the future of the movement is is going to be bright, and I don't want to miss out on it. I don't want to be like oh, I had enough of this Krishna consciousness, and then I take off. And then, you know, you got, like, there's this whole explosion again. It looks like another explosion is going to take place of, um, of the Hare Krishna movement. So thank you for being part of that. And uh, I'd love to just, uh, be of some service. So. Well, Hare Namruchi is the original Bhakti explosion. <laughs> <laughs> we we're, were just watching um, Mahavishnu Swami in Las, Las Vegas. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. That's pretty cool. I got a, like, a question, a small practical question. Uh, once you start like this center uh, in the studio, uh, now you got the idea that people are the center, like people who are coming there, they should be the center of the program. and uh, truly like everything builds around it but how did you did you communicate this idea to all the other devotees when you were doing this when you like starting this program how did you do it and how did the, you manage everyone to cooperate together so everyone is understanding what's their role in in this preaching center yeah yeah good question good point yeah the reality is we can't do anything on our own is not possible. You need friends, you need devotees who are going to help. And they have to do it with a full heart because something like this, you're going right in the face of the material energy. You're going very aggressively against mm -hmm. the whole course of civilization. Okay. So you have to be really determined and you need a team who are like together. They're not going to argue, not going to fight, and they're just going to follow this. So that's really important. I mean, from my experience, of course, it's going to be different everywhere, but through my conversations with the Maharaj, I just pieced together basically what it will look like and what the structure will be, who, who could be the responsible persons. And just in a very straightforward way, I just presented it. Got everybody together who thought could help, who might want to help. And just present it in a very straightforward way. This is what we have to do. Okay. This is coming from above. Okay. This is not my idea. Okay. I haven't got any motivation in this at all. Okay. But I do want to make devotees. So this is the system. So we're going to follow this. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> now there's room for, um, there's room for, uh, what you would call it, elaborations or um, what is it when you uh, you a little bit add some of your own flavor to it. What Creativity. Is? Creativity, yeah. So the idea is that we can't compete with real nightclubs. We can't compete with real, you know, restaurants. But we can add that element of creativity. And intelligent people, they really respect, they appreciate creativity because you, what price can you put on it? It's like a piece of art, you know, it's, you know, it's just paint, and, you know, but you, you pay for the creativity. So everybody is encouraged to add their own personal flair, you know, that should always be there. But the structure can't change. The structure has to be the same. This is how we're going to do it. So then with that in place, it was very simple. So I put one person in charge of eat night. So on the Wednesday night, we had one brahmachari, Sham Govinda. 
uh, for the Friday night, we have Jai Murari Nataji. And then the Sunday, we have Kelly, Kelly Kanan, I forget. Dave Marita Maharaj is, has this standard. And it may not be practical in all situations, but the person leading the kirtan should be an initiated devotee. The person giving the talk should be an initiated devotee, or at least somebody who's aspiring for initiation, because that's the potency when that, that person is connected to the parampara. That's very effective. That all automatically solves a lot of problems, because generally speaking, a person who is surrendered to a guru, who has actually taken that step, uh, is committed, uh, generally speaking, um, they, 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 they know how to you know, work in a, in a team. They should know how to follow uh, you know, an authority, the principle. So that's, that worked very well. And um, yeah, but the main point, I guess, is just the structure has to be in place. Then the individuals, they work within the structure, but within the structure, they're allowed to, like, so each night is completely different. The Wednesday is different from the Friday and the Friday is completely different from the Sunday because it's a different individual in charge. But it's the same structure. It's, it's the kirtan, the talk, the kirtan, the prasadam, you know? Uh, so it's the same, but the flavor is completely different. So, so therefore you give the individual simultaneously freedom, but at the same time there's restriction. Oh. Everybody wants to be free. So you have to give them the freedom and then that, that makes it exciting also. You know, but at the same time there has to be control and, and then it all works very nicely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hopefully there'll be many more centers like this opening up all around the globe. Absolutely. Especially the one that you're going to open in Melbourne, which is a very uh, important city. It's an important I, city on the, uh, on the, gl on one, the globe. One, the very open one. And um, yeah, it's because it's it's, we have the longest lockdown in the world. In Melbourne. Yeah. I'm not there. I escape it. But um, there's one devotee who actually did what we wanted to do. He bought a building in one of the coolest places in Melbourne. It's called the Bhakti Corner. It's like a two, two, it's a two story building with an awesome studio on top. So um, uh, that's, that looks promising. Um, so Amazing. I don't know. Get involved. Thank you. Thank you. It's important we have to Thank cover you. the whole globe with Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I'll ask a question, but I'll let someone else ask. Um, okay. Let some, somebody else speak. You've been going on now for ages. We've got a question from Pala Sarisata. So, Pala, could you please unmute yourself and ask your question? Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Andavad Pranams. Um, yeah. I've got a question. Um, <clears throat> what's the best way to uh, invite non-devotees to the temple? And how do you know the right time to do it? Yeah. An interesting question. That's a good point is that I forgot to mention about how we invite people to the program. It's all through book distribution. They meet a Sankitan devotee on the street. We've got these really cool flyers. Zero religious connotations on it at all. Very cool. Actually, maybe I even have one here. I can show you. And then we invite them to the program. When do you bring them to the temple? Do they even find out that there's a temple? I mean, you guys can decide yourself, depending how it is at the temple, whether or not you want to bring them to that temple. So some temples are kind of cooler than others. So, But what we found is... Um, generally, they decided themselves when they wanted to come to the temple, and then we just facilitated that. They heard that there was a temple, and then, oh, can we visit the temple? And uh, so we were there for them when they arrived, and they, they had, uh, it's really important that the first time they come to the temple, they have a very nice experience. And now we've got um, two or three of them are coming almost every day to the class and some one of them's even coming for japa and this so we shouldn't be afraid but at the same time just careful because a lot of people are frightened of religious institutions they're frightened of temples churches mosques whatever but if they have a friend who's there who's going to be cool then then it's, then it's okay so i guess then based upon that you would say that if you feel your relationship is good with them and they trust you, then that would be a good time to bring them to the temple. 
Okay, and sometimes you find that, okay, uh, we have to keep proper version of etiquette. Maybe sometimes you preach to a madaji or a group of madajis, and it gets uh, a bit difficult for, for especially a male preacher to win their trust. So in that situation, what could we do? Do we involve another madaji from the temple maybe to take over and maybe um, make them feel more comfortable? It's easier with uh, guys if you preach to men, you know, and you have, you know. <laughs> yeah, I get that. But part of the team, you have to have girls on the team. Okay. You have to have girls on the team who like to, to make devotees. So in New Zealand, the whole program is run by girls. There's okay. no boys there at all, practically. Because if you want to make brahmacharis, you've got to have some girls bringing them in. And and, and and talking to them so what was so you got they, they're very good you know they make everything very clean very neat and they make it beautiful you know so you you, you got to have girls in there who are preaching uh, and then you can have girls preaching to the girls and then you can have boys preaching to the boys or you can have girls preaching to the boys and the boys should preach to the boys and in that way then it all works out pretty good you know at the moment we're having to i'm we are preaching to the girls because we don't have enough girl preachers ourselves. We have three at the moment. But that should be there. So if you don't have, then you have to make some. <laughs> the good thing about, another thing I forgot to mention was that uh, in, in line with that is that anybody who comes through your programs because they came through that way, they will really believe in those programs. They will see, they would have felt the benefit of that experience. And then they will want to give that to others in the same way. So, so that's very important because what happens is that those, the first devotees you make in this new way will become the preachers. You know? They'll become the preachers later on. And then we can move ourselves out a little bit and be more thoughtful and you know, like that. You know what I mean? So, thanks, thanks, bro. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. We also had a, a hand up from Savia Sachi Prabhu. So, Savia Sachi Prabhu, you can ask yourself and ask your question. Savia Sachi. Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Dharma Prabhu. Oh, Thank you. Thank you so much for this uh, kata, <laughs> for this class. And uh, it's so nice to hear officially, you know, what's going on in, in, in London, because you've been like buried into the service I saw. And uh, I just wanted to really acknowledge uh, that, you know, Prabhupada gave a formula that works, you know, Prasadam, the holy name, you know, happy devotees. And, um, and I see that in London, you are mentioning that there's a, a bit of a, a team of devotees that are assisting you to do this service. And because it's also coming, you know, with the blessings and a tried and tested way, you know, we can see that the success is is coming. So it's very nice to hear uh, of how Krishna consciousness actually does affect people's lives and change people's lives. Because what's happening is that when you don't see that happening, uh, people coming in fresh, happy, uh, yeah, people lose faith, you know, so it sounds like a good story. Chant and be happy and, uh, <laughs> uh, but if, if you are drinking from a, a river that's flowing, you know, you always are experiencing the, the efficacy of bhakti. So my comment is basically just to say, you know, it's very good to hear how Krishna consciousness is effective. And uh, the fact that one point you just made at the end the experience that one goes through, um, 
then they want to share that with others. What happens when people are carrying an experience which is uh, less than par, that you know, they are now not eager to bring anyone into a situation less than par, or they didn't experience uh, the most ideal thing. I mean, how do you enthuse such a person to say, well, you may not have had the best thing, but if you understand it's the best, try to help create a better situation for others. Yeah, it's nice. Of course, that is quite often the case. So what the Maharaj told me is basically what we're doing is establishing a new culture. And like a new mood uh, to the reaching out process to people, bringing them over the line to become devotees, to become Vaishnavas in a way which is very uplifting for them and for everybody else. To do away with the negativity, uh, the, the trauma which some devotees still carry from some of the things they had to go through to become a devotee. You know, for us, for example, here, the mentorship system has been a great source of trauma for many devotees to get initiated is like, it was, became so difficult. So that's something that's having to be addressed. So the thing is, initially there may be some hesitation, of course, and that's natural. At the same time, enthusiasm is contagious, is infectious. And believe me, if, if you see what's going on in our programs now, it's impossible not to be enthusiastic. It's, I can't, it's impossible. That means our guests are more enthusiastic than the devotees running the programs? No, it doesn't work like that. The way we, when they react to the kirtan and when they react to the prasadam and then they come to you and say, this is amazing. I love this. And thank you so much for doing this. You know, yeah, it just builds and it builds and it builds. And, and then we, we, we're finding these people that have been hanging around and never became devotees are suddenly becoming interested again. And you know what? We are having so many problems with things like people like the Narayan Maharaj people, like this group or that group, you know, attracting people away from our temples and so forth. They're gone. There's just like... There's no influence anymore, practically. They're around, but they're influenced because we're doing something so much more powerful. We shouldn't underestimate the power of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. And if we're genuinely with a full heart trying to do something very substantial for the fallen conditioned souls, everybody involved will feel it. They will feel it. So how can they, how long can they hesitate for? You can see. You can see it's addictive. So the main thing is just to just to start. Those who come forward first, they'll be the most fortunate. Then you'll have others that will come forward later. Mm -hmm. Everybody will want to be involved at some point. Leave me. So Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you so much for your responses. I'd just like to read uh, a few more. Uh, um, announcements. I see that we've run out of time and we're a little over time. So, if there are any devotees that would like to exit the chat, uh, the the class for now, you can do so. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. So, for the announcements, um, Prabhu can be found on social media at Dalamura Das on Instagram, where you can like, share, follow, and con and share for his content. Kindly visit and share the Wusa social media platforms including facebook instagram and youtube at wusa 108 help us to get to a thousand followers and subscriptions and more we thank you so much for your continued support the japa morning sessions are back every morning from 5 a.m to 7 a.m standard south african time details around the daily program will be communicated on wusa's weekly whatsapp group to join the association every Thursday evening for a jam-packed reading and sharing of realizations via Zoom. And the books are the basis book club. Also, 
our heart to heart Vaishnavi circle is happening every Friday from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Standard South African time with Her Grace Mother Vrajalila, featuring various senior Vaishnavi speakers on Zoom. Visit www.wusa.online to find out more. Register for the CKCKC Cubed Kavya Corner Poetry and Creative Workshop now. Visit the www.wusa.online and Arts and Crafts at Wusa House page. Click on the events banner to register. The Creative Krishna Conscious Content Creator Program is an international collaborative effort with Quiddity Concept Magazine via Creatives Helping Creatives Network, a preaching through empowerment initiative. Well, I would just like to say that I love you all and uh, I love all you devotees. I love the South African devotees. And uh, I wish I could be there with you. Maybe I can be sometime soon. And uh, until that time, I don't know. I just have to tolerate, I guess, and be here. But uh, one good thing is that now, now I am a temple president. I can do anything I like. So in that sense, I can come whenever I want. But. In another sense, it's not exactly whenever I want right now because so many things going on, but definitely. Um, maybe we can all meet in Mayapur also, at, uh, Gopanin times or sharing ideas and uh, sharing enthusiasm and uh, common Common devotion, common love for Srila Prabhupada's mission. Srila Prabhupada. So, yeah, I look forward to that. I just want to say thank you so much for this. It's really made my day, made my week. I'm being here with you all. And, uh, yes, yeah, so my, my deepest gratitude to Sajasachi Ji. He's a very good friend of mine. And, uh, yeah, keep up the good work, guys. I'm very impressed by this. You're really getting things together here online is is really good. It's much better than anything we got going on here in the UK online. This is like very impressive. So yeah, if you if you have this level of commitment, determination, is I'm, I'm I'm completely confident that you you'll have success in all ways. So thank you for tolerating me. I know we've been going on and on like I'm some kind of expert. I'm not. I've just been also very fortunate in my own way to have some kind of successful program. And uh, I look forward to learning from you all. And, uh, some things that you guys are doing there that we could do better here also. Hare Krishna.